lovelies, this is Tara LaShawn, and this is my spill on Power, Season 4, Episode 5, Don't Thank Me. Picking up from last week, where Angela has discovered the video footage of Ghost not planting the gun in the office, it is continued on her running, and she's talking to her sister Paz about feeling that Jamie is innocent. Now, I'm going to say this too. There is some spoilers. There's a lot of spoilers. So if you have not watched the episode, now is your time to kind of tune out because, uh, yes, we're going through the whole thing and if, I don't want you guys to be angry at me for ruining the experience for you. So I'm giving you the opportunity right now. You know, click on it, come back at a later date, hit the like button, we'll be cool. But anyway, getting back to what's going on. Angela is out. She's running with her sister. Her sister stopped running with her and she's like, okay, look, Angela. Because Angela's running full speed ahead. She's like, look, you've been running ever since we left your, your apartment. What's going on? What are you running from? Hmm, good metaphor. So Angela goes to tell her, well, I found evidence proving that, you know, Jamie may be innocent. And her sister's like, well, he's all these things. He's a liar. He's a cheater. He's manipulative. You know, he's he's just a scumbag. He, but if you have evidence that could prove that he's innocent, you have to do the right thing. So Angela's considering this. Now we go to Silver. Silver is meeting with James. Uh, of course, James is upset that Proctor is not on the case. She's like, that Proctor's not on the case anymore. That he got thrown off. And he's like, you know, I, I, I'm trying. You're not the lawyer I pay for, and I'm. No, I want to know if you're ready for this. Can basically, can you do what Proctor? what I was paying Proctor to do, which I don't think you want to get too far. I'm not trusting Silver because I believe he's a little bit more straight and narrow. He's nothing like Proctor. Proctor, a.k.a. Turtle from Entourage, I, he's always going to be Turtle to me, to me personally. But he, he's just, he's in it. He doesn't judge them. He does not care. He cares what they're doing, but he is trying to make it where they're not going to go to jail for doing this. So he's getting an awesome fee. Silver is like, you know, I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to get you off, but I don't have to, I don't have to like y'all. I don't have to respect you. And I am going to judge you. He says he's not going to judge him, but he does kind of have this judgmental side to him. And he really has this thing for Tasha, you know, I'm going to come back to that though. But they're talking, and then he's telling him about their, that they're going to pull his finance, his financial records. So he wants to know if everything's on the up and up, if, you know, there's nothing lingering, any shady business deals. And James like, no, everything is on the cool. Everything is really on the cool. Okay, so we have An Angela back. She's in the office. And out of all people, she goes to talk to Mike. Excuse me, guys. Let me get a little comfortable. She goes to talk to Mike. Why she has not figured out Mike is the mole or Mike is behind so much stuff is beyond me. Okay, can someone please tell me why this has not clicked in her head that something is not right about Mike Sandoval? When she was looking at the video footage on last week, it was already previously viewed by Mike. And instead of going to mock to tell him the evidence, which he's like, I will listen to you now since, you know, the whole Greg pulling over James, that footage, since it came up and it blew up in their face, he's like, I'm listening to you now. You're back on the team. You're back. You're, you are in, you're great. And you are what we need on this team. You have the inside track. So instead of going to mock with it, but mock would have twisted it too, she went to Mike. So Mike's like, no, he did this, he killed him, I'm not even going to consider that, it would damage our defense, and it's, 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 no, Angela, no. And of course, Mike is going to say this because Mike is the killer. <laughs> and it just hasn't, it hasn't, it hasn't clicked that there's something going on with Mike. So, here comes Sax, and here comes Mock in, and they're like, oh, we found this, this huge check that Tommy wrote to uh, James and you know why would he write him such this huge this seven figure check and so they're trying to get that put into court evidence against against James okay so we all know that this money was you know to to pay off Dean 
aka Milan, aka the human cannibal, you know, to to get him out of the picture and also well really to pay Chicago so that they could kill him and take over as the distributors. So they're they're asking about this. They're trying to figure out how they can pin this in with James and with Greg being killed. Okay. So then we get to Tony uh, Parasi, I guess, Tarasi. Okay. And he's in jail. He's working out. So Officer Williams comes in. He sends everybody out. Tony sends everyone out, like, get out, okay? So he's talking to him. He's like, oh, you know, it's real bad to hear about your transfer, that they're going to take you. I mean, you're going over to, to Dansbury. It's real cold over there, man. How you feel about that? And Officer Williams... Hey, Charlie Murphy. He's like, uh, you know what? I ain't got nothing to say to you. I don't know how you even heard about that. But I ain't got nothing to say to you, convict. He's like, well, what do you got to say to me if I was to tell you about James St. Patrick? You know, I know you don't like him, you know. Let's see what we can do about Mr. St. Patrick. So, of course, this tune, he, he's, this is like, okay, yeah. What you talking about? What, what, what you mean? This enlightens him because he's a, he's crooked, okay? He's a crooked P, uh, police officer beating people, and that's really what they do do in jail. They do just find a reason to just beat the hell out of people in jail. How do I know this? I know people that are in jail. Um, some of the things that we see, even here on Power, even on like Orange is the New Black, uh, Wentzworth that I started watching on Netflix, some of these things really do go down where there are some real jacked up guards that work in the prison system and they are horrible okay I, I and me personally i worked with someone who was a prison guard at a female institution uh, yeah it'd be some stuff going on and sometimes people they they emotions get the best of them and an inmate might say something that's just a little flip pow you know and then it's like oh they were resisting I was telling them to do this. They're resisting, and it's and everybody's like, "Oh, okay. Mm, who cares? They're a convict." <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Moving on. So Silver goes to talk to Tasha. He's uh, the way he looks at Tasha is like he's always undressing her with his eyes. Like he's like, you know, I don't know how you ended up with this old this this dude who I know I know he ain't right. I just don't know what he doing, but I know he ain't right. I don't know why you ended up with him, but I'm looking at you. Oh, my goodness, you got a big booty. You got the the, 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 the titties are sitting up nice. You know, you got the hair all going back. He just looks like he just wants to just, every time I see him along with Tasha, it looks like he just wants to just take her and throw her down and just, just have sex with her wherever he is. <laughs> That's the feeling I'm getting, okay? But he's being with her, and he's telling her about, you know, you may have to testify because you are head of the finances or whatever. And she's like, there's got to be another reason. And she's like, how did Proctor get taken off? And he's like, well, it's because of his relation, he, him representing Tom and Egan and their relationship. And they, they thought it was, you know, a conflict of interest. So, of course, Tasha's like, okay. Tasha waits for him to leave. Text Tommy. This is what's going on. They took Proctor off the case. Silver saying, I may have to testify. Well, while she's texting Tommy... Tommy is in the bed with Keisha. Keisha is rolling up a blunt. And they going back and forth. She trying to make jokes. Talking about, you know, he's like, ah, man, you can really roll. I know girls that can't even roll their own hair. And she's like, what do you white guys do? You white guys just, you know, you have bones. He's like, yeah, I got a bone for you right here. <laughs> he's like, yeah, come suck it, queen. <laughs> I'm like, ew, Tommy, really? Yuck, nasty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Okay, I'm done. But um, he gets the text message. While he's reading the text, here's Keisha in the back. She gonna call feelings. He gonna put it down on her so that she gonna call feelings. And she's like, you know, I know you said Holly's not in the picture anymore, but I kind of want to know what she did so I can make sure I don't, I don't make the same mistake. That line there, I know from experience, that is a I'm gonna call feelings. I'm, I want to get. We doing this and I want it to keep going. I want it to even go to another level. I want you to give me all this. I want you to give you me. 
And so, and what I love is the camera did, when she asked, the camera did a shot of Tommy and caught his blue eyes looking straight ahead. Like, oh, hell. <laughs> and he turned around to her and he's like, I'm sorry, did you ask a, I'm sorry, uh, did you ask a question? And she's like, oh, never, never mind, never mind. Because Tommy is still dealing with the fact that, you know, he gave his all to Holly and Holly betrayed him. And he snapped. Okay? So after he get, reads the text message and he leaves Keisha, he goes and finds Proctor. Proctor's just walking down the street, minding his own business. Tommy just runs up on Proctor and pushes him and twists his arm. And he's like, you gonna break my arm. He's like, why I care? I'm like, okay. I guess Proctor hasn't figured out. Tommy is a loose cannon. Tommy does not care. Tommy has shot people. Tommy has ran people over with cars. Tommy is like the beginning of New Jack City. Nino Brown style. He will hold you over the bridge. Just have you lingering. And will find so much humor and enjoyment in it. <laughs> so he's telling him. He's like what's going on? And he, and he was telling him. He's like there's nothing. There's This is standard procedure. You know they're just going to ask questions. You know. And so then Tommy reveals the further information to him like you know you know the uh, the beauty shop the weave shop okay Tasha is cleaning my money through there and he's like so that's why you wanted me to leave Lakeisha Grant out Tasha is an accomplice Proctor's like ugh y'all just give me a headache like ugh ugh go away <laughs> so <laughs> James is in jail and he's trying to behave, he's trying to stay calm. And he goes and he's looking like, who is this visiting me? And I'm like, who? It was a lot of, you see the reaction of the characters' faces, but you don't know who they're talking to or what's going on. And so he's looking like, and he sit down and he takes a little phone. He went, it's Simon Stern from season one and two who wanted to buy out truth and kind of put James like in the back of it uh, who was he was a swinger his wife really wasn't into it he was a swinger he was swinging with I think men he, he was swinging with men and women and the actor in real life is um, he is he is gay um, but anyway that that's never, that's neither here or there but um, I just remembered that but what with looking at him, I was like, oh, that's Victor, you know, so-and-so. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, he came out as gay some years back. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, good actor. Seen him in a couple of movies, real, real, real stand-up actor, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so he's sitting there, and he's like, well, you know what, you're now in our tax bracket, so with you being in our tax bracket, you know, we take care of each other, you know? We may have disagreements, but if you need anything, financial support, I'm there for you. All this said after he threw shade talking about, well, James St. Patrick, well, like the way you're looking at me, if looks could kill, <gasps> too soon. Yeah, way too soon. You were throwing shade, dude. You were throwing shade. So James like, no, I don't want no part of you. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, he's like, man, bye. I'd rather go sit in my cell and look at four walls and no, bye. <laughs> so... We get to Proctor. He's having lunch with his daughter and he's explaining to her. She's like, well, you never have time to hang out with me, daddy. And he's like, well, you know, this real big case I was on, I'm not going to be working in anymore. So I'm going to have a lot of more time to spend with you. And she's like, did, what happened? He's like, well, I messed up at work, you know, and it's okay. And she's like, did you mess up because of me? So, because I'm living with you now. And it is, that kind of got me because kids do think that when something goes wrong with their parents that it's their fault same thing going on with poor Raina right now Raina it hurts me to look at Raina Raina is just like oh my god you poor baby you you need a <laughs> you just need a hug it's okay baby it's not your fault they take it kids can take it so hard and I've done it myself when something's happened with my mom sometimes my dad right now my dad's had a stroke I'm taking care of him I look at what could I have done different to prevent all of this as if it's all on me, which it's not. And it, it was just to look at that, her asking that question to, to Proctor, to Joe Proctor, a.k.a. Turtle, a.k.a. Jerry Favera. <laughs> 
to ask him to ask him that it just it just brought up that whole sense that throughout this the kids think that they are they are the ones who are responsible for their parents' actions. And it's and it's really not that. And so he's telling me, he's like, no, 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 baby, it has nothing to do with you. I love, li I love you living with me. Okay, don't ever think that. So while he's having lunch, here comes Angela. Angela walks up, and he's like, oh. she's like, can I talk to you, Joe? And he's like, you know, me and my daughter are having lunch. We would like to continue. Uh, scram. And she's like, well, I have to really tell you some information. And so she tells him about the video, and he's like, you were right. And she's like, you were right. Proctor. And he's like, no, I wasn't right. James was right. He was telling you. He's like, but you were so busy trying to crucify him because you were mad that you just really couldn't see everything in front of your face, what really was going on. And so she's asking for what do you think I should do? I took it to my team. They told me no. And he's like, well, to tell you the truth, what you need to do, you need to go talk to James. Personally, if you really want to help him, you need to go look at him face to face, eye to eye, and you need to communicate and talk to him. Which even then, when she went to talk to him, and he was like, I'll call Silver, and she's like, thank you. He's like, bullshit. I'm like, girl, please. I'm like, girl, bye. Bye, Felicia. And even when she went to talk to James, she still had this little how am I supposed to believe you and I'm like you're still in your feelings and you need to get out of it and you need to really look at the facts look at the facts look at the evidence okay you have his fingerprints outside the window there's no fingerprints inside and he even went to tell her he's like well the reason I broke in was because Greg when Greg pulled me over he said he had information that you were the mole he did have information that she was in law. He also had information that goes and Tommy killed Lobos. So that's really why he broke in. And he and he shocked her. He's like, you know, and she's like, how am I supposed to believe you, James? How am I supposed to believe anything you say? And he's like, okay, when I was there, you came in. You asked what was going on. How was the meeting with MJ? And she's like, and so Silver asked her, you know, what can you, okay, you coming in here, but what can you really do for us? What really, come on, what, what can you do for us? And she's like, well, she tells him about the check from Tommy. And so it's supposed to be a, a, like a RICO, a, a, a RICO judgment, RICO foul or something like that, where you can prove that a business uh, was using illegal funds to fund something else. Uh, so he's like oh man and he tells and silver tells her to leave and he asks him about the check and what's going on and he's like well that was to pay my former security agency uh dean who is, has been terminated literally killed and <laughs> and that's all it was it was just a loan i just took a loan from him and so he's like okay 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 so back to tasha tasha and keisha they're picking out clothes for Tasha to wear to court and she's trying she's like okay I gotta look kind of like a goody goody or whatever I can't you know look too bold because Keisha picked up this bright red dress I'm like come on girl you cannot wear that even going into even I know that going into court you need <laughs> black or blue you need a basic color basic same thing with job interview kind of basic uh, so they're going back and forth. Keisha gets a text and she's like, <sighs> and Tasha's like, who did you want that to be? She's like, you've been a little too, especially with the shop closing, you've been real easy going, real like ugh, carefree. She's like, it gotta be a man up there. She's like, Keisha starts talking and gives it away. She's like, yeah, you know, there is somebody and you know, I never thought I would get into a white guy. And she's like, a white guy? Real? Tasha's like, white guy, really? And she's like, yeah, but he just knows how to lay it down, you know? And she, she's like, he just got so much flavor. And she just gets to just give into to TMI. And so Tasha's thinking, like, the only person I know like that, the guy's just, that's just not like a dorky white guy, but got a whole lot of flavor is Tommy. And Tommy goes for redheads. And Keisha's just like, what about this black dress? And Tasha's like, uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. Get back to mental note. Get back to that later. So, Julio is with Soul. 
him and so is having sex all over the apartment they all in the living room all in the bedroom all across the couch they in the bathroom in the tub in the deep 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 the deep tub they going at it i was like oh my goodness i was like look i'm, I'm sorry i was like a little kid like <laughs> i want that and i want that and i want that <laughs> but i was like oh wow oh wow they having sex I'm like oh wow just spontaneous just everywhere and he has her on the couch and he's going at it dog is down flip and she he just like like she's a rag doll just flipped her over and came back to the other side and so he's getting all these text messages that's interrupting him going down on her and he's like oh and he's reading it's like everyone like oh, well crystal ball said that you gave you gave him an extra brick i want an extra brick you know and it's going back he's like why is he telling everybody this and so so lets it out that you know yeah i saw him in the club the other night with dre and he's like for real for real you saw him with dre so he was like oh he was talking to dre like yeah she's like i'm going to this party to dre is setting up or whatever do you want me to keep a lookout and he gives her kisses like no nah, baby i got it i got it i knew she was gonna tell i knew she was gonna tell but that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. So, Tariq's sitting here looking at this little, looking at Destiny's phone number, the girl he gone, he gone hooked up with and had sex with. I thought she was really gonna tell him that Slim was Kanan. But he's sitting here looking to, um, trying to, um, decide, should I, should I call her, should I text her, should I say something, you know. And Tommy sneaks up behind him and hits him in the bag with a ball. And he's like, you got to be aware of your surroundings, son. I'm like, wow. Foreshadowing, foreshadowing. Because Tariq is not aware of anything. He's not aware of who he's around, what's going on. To him, it's just like he's getting to just wow out. And he likes it, you know. And so he's and Tommy's asking about his clothes. He's like, so what's going on? That's real nice, cashmere. He's like, yeah, yeah, I went and bought it. He's like, how you get up on some money like this? I'm like, everybody's saying I'm the man of the house now. You know, I didn't ask mom for it. I went and did it on my own. Tommy's like, okay, okay. And so he's like, Uncle T, when did you first, you know, have sex? And so he's like, Tariq, you having sex? And they're going back and forth. And Tariq tells him, he's like, yeah, you know, I met this girl. It just kind of happened, you know, at a party. And he's like, well, whose party was? He's like, it was my friends. He's like, well, who were you there with? He's like, well, Dre took me. Ding, 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 ding. Light bulbs is going off with Julio and Tommy. What's going on with Dre? What is going on with you, Dre? So Tommy's like, oh, okay, okay. So Tommy's like, did you strap up? You use protection? He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, okay, all right, all right. He's like, come on, get ready for court. And he's like, mm-hmm, I'm going to make mental note <laughs> getting Dre's ass so <laughs> at court Tasha's all nervous about having to testify and she wants to go to Silver and tell him you know I, she's trying to tell him something and at this point I'm like what are you trying to tell him okay because she's th she's thinking he may be like loyal like Proctor but she's not exactly sure and I'm like you should not think that he is loyal like Proctor no he's not Actually, I think he's trying to get in your panties, but that's just that's just Tara's opinion, okay? But we're getting, <laughs> but going on, you know, she's like, I, I need to talk to you, I need to talk to you, and he's like, everything's gonna be okay, it's gonna have to wait. And I'm like, Tasha, whatever you had to say, oh my goodness, you could have called the man, you could have called Proctor to get his number and call him before you got into court. My goodness, girl, really, you go, you want to tell him this stuff while you're sitting here? The other side is over there waiting to tear James apart. You know, Angela's confused tail is sitting back there in the back looking crazy. <laughs> so he tells her everything's going to be okay. So when they start off, you know, Silver's like, you know, this is this is what's going on. You know, it was just, uh, just it, all of this is very innocent. And, you know, I have a witness. I want to call a witness to stand. And instead of and Tasha's getting ready to stand up, and he's like, you know, I want to call a witness, James St. Patrick. She go. What fresh hell is this? What's this about? So James gets up there. He's like, you know what? I am a businessman. I am a father. I am, 
a husband. I am a friend. Tommy Egan loaned me the money. At the time, all of my liquid assets were taken to invest with the uh, what was it? with the the hotel the Bassett Hotel industry to make a deal with them and I needed to the cash you know and Tommy had it and he loaned it to me it's just friends loaning friends money you know and so Silver's like well the prosecution is going to say that you paid Tommy Egan to be a hitman for hire to take out to take out Greg Knox he's like that is absolutely untrue so it went really smooth so during the little break, uh, Mock is sitting there with everybody. He gonna gather everybody around. He's like, Angela kind of. I, I saw her her face when when Ghost was talking, and she was she's kind of like, kind of happy it went well for him. Like, yeah, you should be. This is all because of you. And <laughs> so they're all together. Mock, Sax, Dirty Mike. That's his new name with me, Dirty Mike. I like from Pootie Tang, Dirty Mike in the gang, yeah. Dirty Mike. So, no, that's the other guys what we'll throw. Doesn't matter. But they're sitting there and Mike's like, it's bad. And Mike's like, I know what to do. So, while Tosh, while they're waiting, Tosh is sitting outside and here comes Simon Stern. And he's like, Tosh is such a delight to see. And she's like, oh, what do you want? She's like, how single life dream you he's like you know it's so liberating and you know it's such an enjoyment to be free speaking of freedom you know i know you guys are probably having some financial problems she's like i'm fine she's the same way as james was as ghost was we're fine we don't need your help because ultimately it seems like a setup for simon to weasel his way back in to, to kind of take some part of truth you know, kind of take something, something's up. But he gives her his card. He's like, you know, if you need it, call me. Like, he's a little snake in the grass. <laughs> like, you snake in the grass. So, when they were, well, let's get to uh, Dre. Dre is hosting, like, an underground party, the one that So was telling um, Julio about. So, Tommy's there with Christopher. And with Dre, and Dre's explaining like how's the op how the operation is gonna go, how they're gonna push product out. If you know they can't push product while doing business in the club, they can take it back to the way they had it, where they had the carriers taking it to people, and everything. And you know, and so they're like, you know, is Chicago gonna be okay with that? And Chris was like, well, I'll call and ask them. He's like, okay. And so I'm like, good job, Dre, good job coming up with stuff. But real messed up, what you doing with Tariq? And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, keep playing stupid. I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> I'm like, Tommy just does not care. Tommy is wow. And that's and that's one thing I love about Tommy. Tommy is such a wow card. And he he's just exciting to watch. Because you, you really don't know what he's going to do. Because he can be hot-headed. He can be emotional. Then he can be, like, really sweet and sincere. And all about the family and, you know, all about protecting Ghost, all about looking out for Tasha and the kids, which, you know, which is a likable quality in him. But he can be, ooh, he can be extreme. He can be a little extra. And so he's like, man, you took Dre to a party and he having sex with some girl? And Dre's like, I don't know. He's like, you took Tariq to a party and he having sex with some girl? Dre's like, man, um... I don't know what Tariq told you. Like, I just dropped him off at his friend's house. I don't know what else was going on. So he's like, okay. So get back to court. They're back in session. Mike goes and he's going to uh, do the cross-examination. Oh my goodness. He twisted everything around and he's like, you know, you went into Greg Knox's apartment with the mission to kill him, to protect Thomas Egan. It's like you said that you're a friend, you know, and friend and loyal businessman. And you're a friend and you're a loyal businessman. It's like, could it be?
Tommy, you were in need of money. Tommy Egan paid you to kill Greg Knox because he knew that Greg Knox was coming on to him. And you as his friend, you went and did it. You went in there. You looked at him. You, sh you looked at Greg Knox. You thought about it. You thought about it. You looked in his eyes and then you knew you had to kill him and you shot him. And of course, Ghost is getting mad because he's like, He's like, I was never, never in Greg's house. Lie. He's like, I'm not a murderer. Well, yeah, you are. You just didn't kill Greg. You just didn't kill Greg. So it, it, it ends up being in favor with Mike and the crew because James gets emotional. He's like, I didn't kill Greg. And he's like, well, he's like, how do you even, how do you feel so comfortable just to call him Greg and not Agent Knox? I'm like, okay, really, Mike, really, but it it, it made made things look bad, and so Angela's like, okay, this 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 cannot be, this cannot be, this cannot be, and she's sitting and she's having wine and she's talking to Paz, and Paz is like, well, did you take it to your team? And she's like, I took it to him. She's like, well, you, Paz, like, you did everything you can, and I'm like, Paz don't care if he go to, if he die or not. <laughs> she's mad that he messed over her sister. And so then, once again, got Angela making a call. Angela calls. This is Agent Angela Valdez. And you don't know who she's talking to. And it's kind of like, okay. Pause is like, don't do anything that's going to hurt yourself or the family. And then it cuts. Okay, so Ghost and Silver Ghost is like, what is going on? You're supposed to make sure stuff like this in court doesn't happen. What is going on? And so Silver's telling him, he's like, okay, I'm going to pull some more t some more people in on our team to find the evidence that they are not, that, that, you know, the FBI, their task force is not, is ignoring, that can prove that you are innocent. But it's going to cost some more money. And Jim's like, oh, you know, ugh, ugh. So he's in the gym. He's he's lifting, he's work, he's boxing, he's doing something in, in the gym. And in walks, dang, dang, Officer Williams. And everybody starts scattering like roaches when the lights come up. And he sits and he antagonizes James. James is trying to leave. He's like, where are you going? He's like, I'm going back to my cell. So he antagonizes. He's like, oh, you must have had a bad day in court. Must have been something sitting there with your, watching your, uh, going in there and your, uh, seeing your little nigglets sitting there. He called the man's kids nigglets. I'm like, oh man, really? What is this? Tells from the hood? Anyway, and he's like, yeah, yeah, your, your wife got a real fat ass and everything. It ain't gonna take long for somebody to be, to be giving it to her, to be dicking her down. And, you know, and so we get another close up. James looks and it's directly eyes directly in the camera and it's like oh wow you can you can see the emotion running through his face like Tommy when he was being asked about Holly and the emotion going through his face you see the emotion going through James face this guy is saying all the stuff to him he's like you know maybe maybe she'll give it up for a dude in a uniform you think she'll come to Dansbury to visit me what would that be your kids calling me daddy James loses it and rope punches him and I'm like okay they could have made it a little bit more believable because with all of this the fighting he got he got punched throat he got hit in the chest about five times he got hit in the, the ribs he officer okay I'm talking about the character now officer Williams is real real slim how can you take all that and still manage to get a few good licks in, licks in with your baton I don't know but all the emotion that Ghost has been been going through with being in court, with being being in jail, with trying to fight, with, with being pent up on something that he really this time didn't do. Although he's done a dozen other bad things, million other bad things, he's dealing with all this. And he loses it and he takes it out and he beats the hell out of Officer Williams with a weight to the point where he smashes in his face. So in comes Tony Tarasi and his flunky. The flunky looks, the flunky, right then, Ghost is having like an outer body experience. He's like, man, I can't believe this. I actually have killed this man in jail. What am I going to do to cover it up? 
it's kind of like he was just like, oh man, I'm really messed up now. I'm really messed up. Flunky tries to shank him. He takes the shank away from him. And all of a sudden, Tony puts him in the headlock. And he's, and he's like, what are you doing? He's like, yeah, change plans. And so he chokes him out, strangles him. So he tells Ghost, he's like, man, act fast, act fast. Look alive, look alive, look alive. Look al this is my brother talking about you watch Power. Of course I did. I'm doing a review on it right now. <laughs> Me and my brother usually watch Power together. I can't wait. I can't wait on him. I, I, mm -mm. But anyway, so James changes clothes with the flunky. I don't know what the flunky's name is. He changes clothes with the flunky. They make it look like a murder suicide. They made it look like he killed him. He didn't want to do life, so he hung himself with his belt. Okay. But then, too, you know the other flip side to this is now that Tony knows more information on James and can further damage him. So something's going to have to be done about Tony, too. Because Tony's the, they, they were the only two witnesses to this. The cameras do not work, as it was said in the last episode four. You know, when he when uh, Williams was holding the bar down on James's neck, and he's like, yeah, we lost a prisoner like this who was a cop killer, too, just like you. Don't look at them cameras. Boy, them cameras don't work. So you only got one more witness who can turn it around on you. <sighs> so now he kind of owns you. Kind of his, you know. Now you, he's a little lab dog for real. So we get to um, Tasha and Tommy. Tommy's in inside the house um, with Tasha. He's drinking some orange juice, and Tasha's like, you know, yeah, all this is going on and everything, and. So and so and so and so and I just need to know, you know, how long you've been, you know, how long have you and Keisha been messing around? Tommy is just drinking his juice with his eyes wide open, like, and he's just gulping. He's gulping, 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 gulping. And she's like, you know, <laughs> she was like a mom to me interrogating her kids. She's like, don't lie to me. I know you've done it. She's talking about this white boy who's going to put it down on her and has her whipped and everything. And... I know both of y'all. I know something is going on. When did it start, Tommy? And of course, he still. And when he finished the orange juice, he's like. So she said, I put it down, right? I'm like, Tommy, you stupid. And she's like, what in the world? What is going on? How did this happen? And so he tells her about. He goes back and he tells her about Milan. He's like, Milan thought she was going to be a threat. So Milan wanted me to kill her. He's like, instead of killing her, I took her and I hid her away. And he's like, and so, you know, in between that, I hid it multiple times. And she's like, oh, man. She's like, you don't know what's going to happen. You're talking about she, she going to call feelings for you, Tommy, and everything. You know, and I know you definitely, you ain't got the same feelings for her that she got for you. You ain't feeling her like that. And she's like, I honestly thought you was going to go get Holly, especially when you found out Holly was pregnant. And so Tommy finally just, he's tired of carrying this weight on his shoulder. Because he's carrying this big weight about Holly. He hasn't told anybody. The only people that know is him and Ghost. So he, he just tells he's like, look, Holly's not coming back. Holly's dead. And she's like, what? And she, he tells her what happened. He's like, she tries, you know, Lobos wanted me to kill Ghost. I wasn't going to do it. Holly tried to do it herself. I snapped. I killed her. He's like, I didn't know about the baby at the time. So, I never would have put my hands on her if I knew she was pregnant. Probably would have slapped her around a little bit. But I wouldn't have killed her if I knew she was pregnant. If I knew she was pregnant at the time. It's like, but she's dead. And so, he's expecting Tasha to go off on him. And instead, Tasha turns around she's like, I understand why you did what you did. We're family. We protect each other. She's like, but we got to protect each other now, too, because we don't know what Keisha going to do if you hurt her feelings. And she's like, Tommy, you're going to have to, you know, do something with her because if she runs and talks and her feelings, if she gets all in her feelings and she starts doing like Angela doing and just acting, you know, you're trying to make a plausible reason for why you're doing things making it the right way but you're not doing it the right way you're not looking at the full picture it's, it's basically if Keisha goes to talk what's going to happen to all of us 
And so he's like, well, I know that's your girl, so I'll take care of it. And so I hope that's, to me, that was code for like, I know that's your girl, so before I do anything to her, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to actually come to you and tell you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Uh. And later on, she's texting Tommy. She's like, I haven't heard from you today. Or is everything okay? He's playing pool. He's like, oh, my goodness. Like, girl, get off this phone. Because then he's getting hit up by um, Patar. Patar. Patar, whatever it's like, Patar, about, we need you in Chicago, and he's like, do they not like the new setup, he's like, no, it's not about that, we need you in Chicago to talk business, so Tommy's like, okay, I gotta find me a clean ride, so I can get to, to Chicago, okay, back in court the next day, where the judge is supposed to rule if he's gonna put the, the check into evidence or not, they're sitting there, Mike and Mock, and they're like, you know, is this about and then they're like where's Angela so Silver gets up and he's like you know the judge says something has been brought to my attention so I want to address it Silver says okay I have another witness I have you know agent Angela that is and he's like and Mark's like she can't testify she can't testify she's on our case she's on our side nope she gets up she tells him about the video she tells him that she thinks he's innocent she admits I made a mistake and you know so then Mark gets up and he tries to make Angela look bad, which in return he makes the whole task force look bad. Look bad. He's like, is it true? He's like, why do you implicate your... Because she implicated Mark and Mike in this. That she took evidence to Mike. Mike said he, the video to Mike. He said he wasn't going to use it. She took the traffic cam to Mark. He dismissed. He just threw whatever. He's like, get, get out of my face. He gave no regard to it. And so now... You know, so Mark's like, "Well, why do you even fight yourself?" She's like, "I didn't do anything wrong in this case." Uh, she's like, "I didn't do anything in this case." She's like, "Well, not in this one, but how about the one with Tommy, Thomas Egan?" Because uh, you allowed, you were having a sexual relationship with him. He had preview information about Lobos. Uh, he was able to manipulate and change evidence that you had in your home, and the judge is like, "Are you kidding me?" And he's like. Miss Valdez, is this true? And Angela's just sitting there kind of stunned. She can't believe Mom just put it out like that. And he's like, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> and so she's like, it's true. And he's like, what is, he's like, this is the silliest stuff. And then here comes Sax coming down. And he's like, yeah, and I just got evidence, sir, Mark, that, you know, she submitted the evidence an hour later than what she reported or whatever after finding the fingerprints. And he's like, okay, look. The judge goes and he, he leans into Angela. He's like, you don't, you have not withheld the oath that you took. And, and he's just reading her. And, and you know, Marcus, and Marcus is like, thank you, thank you. He's like, I'm not done. He's like, oh, this is like a circus. All of y'all are clowns. All this evidence, it's, it's not even making sense. He's like, you know what? This is just, this, this is so stupid. I'm not even going to let this go to trial. And it was like... I, I was I was watching and I fell off my bed literally. He says, you know, Mr. St. Patrick, okay, um, if you did kill Agent Knox, hopefully another task force will come through, another team will come through who can properly <laughs> properly handle the case. He's like, but right now, I'm just gonna say you're free to go. You can be discharged. I was like, thank you. Free at last, free at last. They freed James St. Patrick's ass. I'm like, yay! Oh, my ghost is not going to spend the whole season in jail. This is not going to be like Orange is the New Black where the whole freaking season was about the stupid riot. I'm like, he's not going to be in prison. Yes, he's coming home. Woo! -hoo. I was happy. I was, I was, I was so happy. And Josh was sitting there like, oh, he's coming home. He's coming home. And you would think Tyreek would feel the same way. Oh, daddy's coming home. I'm not going to try to go out. And which I don't understand why Tasha is supposedly let him out. Where, get back to what's going on. The party's going on. Kanan decides to bring his raggedy tail into the party. Looking for Dre. Him and Dre are back in the office with a see-through see window on the door. Not smart talking and Dre's giving him the money he says this is the last of the money I'm not giving you anything else you're gonna stay away from Tariq and 
as soon as she's saying it, Teresa's like, yeah, I told my mom I'm going over to a friend's, and, you know, you want to hang out tonight? And I'm like, dummy. And I'm like, okay, first of all, your dad's getting out of jail. Why would you want to go spend the night at a friend's? Your dad is literally getting out of jail that night. You know this. Second of all, Tasha, why are you letting him go out and his father's getting out of jail? His dad hasn't been home in who knows how long, which I'm thinking is going to be like a couple of months in TV world. And But why would you, that's something that's like really important. So why would you let your, your child be at a friend's house? And then, yeah, it was just crazy. And so, and so, you know, Kanan's texting him. He's like, yeah, keep talking, Dre. What you talking about? Come on. Come on. Keep going. But at the same time, Julio comes in. And Julio sees Kanan talking to Dre. I'm like, oh, it is about to hit the fan. Because I'm like, how long is it going to take before Julio really goes to Tommy and tells him, you know, everything that Dre has been doing. And especially, I saw you talking to Kanan. Because the story is supposed to be Kane is dead. He's and then once again we we see Tariq going to Kanan's apartment. Kane is not even there. And he's talking to someone who we can't see. He's like, Oh hey, what you doing here? Cuts off. So when Kanan gets home, you know, he finds out the person who was in the house who was talking to Tariq was Jukebox. Jukebox like Okay, Ghost is getting out of jail, so we're back to the original plan. We're going to kidnap the kid, we're going to get the money from Ghost, and we're going to kill them both. And Kane's like, well, what you want me to do? So, that was the last thing that happened, but before that, Silver is in the apartment, goes to Tasha, and he's telling them that Ghost is about to come home in a few hours or whatever, and she's all excited. He gives her this hug. He's holding her just a little bit too long. He's like, you know, yeah, call me if you need anything. He's like, but, uh, you know, I suggest, you know, while the money's being unfroze, you know, you get like a, a runner or whatever, he said. And so she decides she's going to call Stern and actually take him up on this offer. Bad idea. But that is what happened. Episode 5, Power. I'm happy that Ghost James is out. From the previews, it looks like he's going to go right back. He, he's not even going to miss a beat. He's going to go handle up on some dudes. They got Tariq's stupid self. Um, so, you know, make sure you tell me how you feel about the show. Did you like it? What your thoughts are? Um, make sure you hit the like button. And until next week, this is Tara LaShawn. Thank you, lovelies. Have a good one.